welcome to the Build Business Acumen Podcast, where we deliver practical knowledge and powerful guidance. Here is your futuristic host, Nathaniel Schooler. Today I'm interviewing someone called Lyndon Wood, and he's the CEO of Constructor Quote, which he started when he was 19 years old in 1990. He was struggling financially, and he had to live out of his car when... He landed a commission-only insurance job. He had no experience in the industry, but needed to support his family. So nine months later, he decided to take control of his life and his career, and he started Constructor Quote and persuaded insurance companies to trust him. And then he became a millionaire when he was 26 years old. By the time he was 28, he was a multimillionaire. And he's a serial entrepreneur, and he's launched lots of other businesses, including Ex Broker, Sun Tzu, and Curious How. And in 2012, he wrote a book called Diary of a Fortune Hunter. And he also had a Sky TV show based on his book called Fortune Hunter TV, when he interviewed all sorts of successful entrepreneurs around the world about building businesses and startups and this kind of stuff. And yeah, it's a great interview. Uh, check it out. Have a listen. And, uh, please make sure you drop me a review and share with your friends. We're going to talk a bit about innovative thinking and creativity and critical thinking and sort of anything in between because Lyndon's involved with a lot of different businesses and I'm looking forward to learning more about him. Nice to see you, Lyndon. Thanks for the podcast invite. Uh, brilliant. So, in terms of your your career, I know you've been in, you've been involved with an insurance business, haven't you? That you're you're the CEO of, right? And you've been doing that for quite a quite a long time. But technology is a big part of your of your business, isn't it? Yes, I mean, I, I set up Morehouse Group and ConstructorQuote.com, which came out a little bit later, but at the age of nineteen, so some over twenty nine years ago now, August nineteen ninety always majored on the sort of tech front or sort of fell into that about 15, 16 years ago. So right at the forefront of it all, which sounds a bit bizarre, because it's only 16 years ago, uh, but people were still using modems back then. Uh, so my first uh, transactional website, which was all clunky, but it looked great at the time, um, I couldn't put any images on there because modems just wouldn't load them. <laughs> <laughs> Is it that horrible modem noise? I mean, some of the people listening to this don't even know what a modem is, right? I actually, I actually miss it. <laughs> you miss the noise. <laughs> yeah, it's quite an addictive noise. Yeah. Well, it was quite a calming noise, wasn't it? Because when you heard the noise going, you knew that something was at least happening, right? Yeah, poltergeist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, classic so 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 in terms of your constructor quote do you still are you still involved with that uh yeah but no the business trades well uk top 100 specialist broker uh constructorquote.com is the online you know buy get your policy online for uh, trades people consultants for their sort of professional indemnity insurance and so on um that's there and morehouse group are for larger organizations of two million plus turnovers Right. That's, that's really great. So with, within your businesses, in terms of sort of innovative thinking and creativity, where do you begin with that? Uh, this is an easy one. I begin, and this is quite interesting, actually, when you're trying to come up with whether it's I, not, not necessarily business ideas, but the creative aspect or creative thinking for marketing, whatever, just imagine this. If you were given a planet and it was empty, and it was all of yours, what would you make it look like? What would it be? Would you still build houses? Would you make cars? Would you still drill for oil? Because when you ask people that question, I've tried doing it myself, it's real difficult to answer. Yeah, because we're used to certain things like a house and like a car and so on. Um, but it gets the creative juices really flowing. Right. So it opens up your mind to the sort of possibilities of what you of what you actually want to do, right? Yeah, and, and it goes deeper than that. It actually it actually makes you question what you want out of life as well, uh, because you think, well, I wouldn't have a car. I'd walk everywhere because it'd be healthier. And then you start thinking, so why do I have a car? Yeah, it's, it's yeah. that type of questioning. I've never thought about it like that. 
a blank canvas, what would you make it look like? What would your planet look like? What would your version of Earth look like? That's really interesting because I've, I've been thinking about, you know, my perfect day. So yeah. I, I spent a bit of time talking with a friend of mine. He's, he's, he's Britain's leading hypnotist and he's moved now into subconscious success, right? Yeah. So he helps people to get the back of their brain in touch with the front of their brain so it works, right, in essence, and delivers the results for their lives. And he's got this perfect day process that I followed in his, in his book. It goes through, like, you know, what, what bed are you in? What, what, what actually does it look like? When you wake up in the morning, you open the curtains, what does it look like outside? But what you're saying is, is even deeper than that. It's, it's, it's just opening up the brain to all possibilities isn't it yeah and it, uh, and you know if you enter that thought process of the the planet sort of scenario if you enter it from a business perspective and think right how do i want my planet to look if it was a a planet to do with marketing what would it look like what sort of people would be on there uh what tools would i have on there you know and 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 you can apply it to anything and then you can apply it to your own life what what would my life look like if i had a green uh, uh, sorry, clean slate. What would I do? Is, is this the career I want? Is this the business I want? Am I enjoying it? Would I, you know, would I have a car? Would I? Would I have a, such a big house when it's just me living in it? You know, it's that type of thing. I'm just sitting here nodding away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, 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 yeah. Would I? Would I build houses on the planet? Would I do that? Would I drill for oil, or would I just live under a tent and grow lots of organic vegetables? Yeah. yeah? Yeah, would al would al would alcohol exist? Do you, you know, what would you want it to look like? But the, I think the message is loud and clear on that one. It's a great way to get the juices flowing. Yeah, that's really that's really interesting. So, this is applicable to anybody, right? Whether they're creative or not creative, and in any any aspect of their life, right? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And you haven't got to be in business to use it either. It's, it's so relevant to that perfect day process, but actually it takes it to a different level altogether, doesn't it? it it's, it's, it's relevant to happiness. Yeah. 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 Well, that's, that's the most important thing, isn't it? I mean, what, you know, what's the point of, of going into business, for example, or going to work if it's not making you happy, right? I mean, you, if, if you're not doing something that makes you happy, then potentially it's time to sort of change what you're doing and, and come up with something new. And I think, being creative and innovative actually helps you to do that, doesn't it? Oh, completely. And, and I, I've always brought my kids up um, and said this to them repeatedly over, over many years. And I've got a 26-year-old, a 24-year-old, an 18-year-old boy and a 15-year-old girl. Mm -hmm. um, and I will say this to them, your, your father works hard so that you can work hard on things that you enjoy and making a difference in the world for the better. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Now, of course, now they're older, uh, it does bite you on the backside a little bit because they, they live them words. <laughs> <laughs> so good old dad just funds it. <laughs> right, right. So my, my, my son's a drummer, he's a musician, uh, doing what he's passionate about, which is what I've always wanted for my kids. Yeah. Uh, my daughter's into photography and creative things, and uh, she loves that. My other daughter's studying um, psychology, and that's what she wants to do and has a passion for it. So it's great to see your kids doing things that they enjoy and where they want to spend their sort of careers and lives rather than having to do something that they don't like, um, which just makes their lives miserable. Yeah, yeah, I, think, I totally agree, 100%. It's, it's amazing how you can just go down the wrong route, though, and, you, and, and sometimes you'll just, you just end up there and, you'll, and you, one day you'll just you either have a nervous breakdown or you just look at yourself in the mirror and you don't like who you are. Oh, you, you know what? We know lots of people that are in jobs and they're miserable. And, they're, and because they're in work eight, nine, ten hours a day in, a, in something they're not enjoying and they're stuck with the traditional mortgage and some car finance and they go on their uh, two holidays a year that they just got to save galore for. Do, do you know what I mean? And yeah. they're just not happy people, but they're stuck in this financial prison yeah because yeah. they have the mortgage they have the debt and they have the two kids and the wife and everything else you know and it's sad really because you get one shot you get one shot at life and and you just have to 
sometimes make that step up and make that big change and, and make your life happen because no one or anything is just going to land on your lap. You have to make it happen. Yeah, I like that about you. I've asked you lots of questions whilst, we, whilst we've been getting to know each other a bit on Twitter and some of the advice you've given me. In fact, all of it has been, has been really good advice. It's up to me whether I took it or not. But <laughs> yeah, Well, that's it. All, all, all I can do, and like I say to people, I went through a phase many years, you know, you build yourself up and you build up your own ego to a, to a point. And we've all got a bit of ego. I hate ego, but we all need it, you know? Yeah. Um, and you build yourself up to a point where you start, you know, sharing what, you, uh, what you've learned, your experiences. But actually, you end up not sharing. And you see this in other, I'll put successful in, in brackets, but other successful individuals, they'll, they'll tell you, they'll tell you things, yeah? Yeah. I went off that because actually when you're telling somebody something, it's a bit like a poke in the chest. Yeah. yeah. And if I tell you how to do a podcast, yeah, mm. you could very well sit back and go, well, you've just knocked my confidence because now I, I feel I'm doing it all wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Because if I share with you my experience of doing a podcast, it's just very different. So now I share what I know and it's up to people whether they want to use it, don't use it, but I share my knowledge, I share my experiences rather than telling people my experiences. Yeah, I think that's, uh, that's the way to go. I mean, I'll tell you something quite funny. I've got a friend and he's, he's quite independently wealthy. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't yeah. have to work. And, yeah. and, he's, and he said, right, come, come down to the yacht. And we're, you know, I mean, he's got three aeroplanes, yeah. And he's, and he's got, you know, they're, they're only small, you know, they're not yeah, like. But still, yeah, yeah. But even so, three aeroplanes and a big, big yacht. It's the biggest yacht in the harbour. Yeah. Uh, and he said, come down to the yacht and, you know, I'll get you food and we just stay over and hang out and stuff. And, yeah. and this was one of the biggest lessons that I've, that I've actually had in the past few years. He, he drove us to Tesco's. We, we, we went to Tesco's and, we, and he bought us two ready meals. And, and we're talking like the one pound ready meals, yeah? Yeah. The chicken curry ready meals, right? Yeah. And we went back to the boat and he put mine in the microwave and he gave me my food and I sat there and I've wolfed it down because I was doing a lot of training at the time and I was really hungry. I've eaten this whole meal and he's sitting there eating his and I've looked at him. I said, I'm really hungry. Have you got anything else? And he yeah. said... And he said, I'm on a diet. You can have half of mine. <laughs> <laughs> and did you? <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. And it, it, and, but the whole point is, it's like the problem that I see a lot of the time in, in, you know, with people is they're just wasting money on stuff they don't even need to impress people they don't even like. No, I mean, you know, I'm... I, built myself to get to a fortunate position of being able to buy things like cars and whatever but and why not i work my balls off do you know what i mean yeah yeah uh, but you don't do it though Lyndon, to impress other people you do it because you enjoy it it's a difference and, and there, yeah that is a big difference and don't get me wrong many years ago probably a decade or a bit more i would do it to you know look at me i've got i've got a bentley or i've got a whatever you know car yeah. or whatever it's, yeah it was that it was that ego buzz of driving around and people looking you know yeah um but then very quickly sort of go beyond that because that, that's not really being human. And, yeah. you know, so you buy these things because you enjoy them. I, I love the iconic thing of a Ferrari or the, the history of a Bentley. You know, it's, I, yeah. I just enjoy the vehicles. Don't get me right. I'm not, I'm not into the engines. Um, I, just like, <laughs> I just like what they stand for, you know? Yeah, yeah. You buy um, into the brand, don't you, in essence? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's more more for it and why not you know i shortened my life by 10 years by being in business i employ well over 100 people i pay stupid tax yeah um why can't i have a nice car yeah yeah well yeah. you've earned it and but the thing is though nowadays there's a change in 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 how people look at wealthy and successful people and and in fact i think we're a lot more american than we were 10 years ago back 10 oh, years ago you definitely get people, you know, looking at you and going, look at that rich totter. He's got, a, you know, but now yeah. people will come up to you probably and say, how did you manage to get that? Yeah. Yeah. And that is the difference between UK and America. UK, you know, you, I'm not starting a business and people try and help you with your business. Then you become remotely successful and they see you move into a bigger house or buying a nicer car and going on four holidays a year instead of two or one. Um, then they get a bit envious and some get a bit jealous and, some of your friends sort of back off and disappear. Yeah. In America, 
if you make a million dollars or two million dollars, they want to know how you did it. Yeah. 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 And you know what? Very rarely do I get asked by any UK person, how did you do it? I always ask you how you do these things. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but very, yeah. But no one has asked me, probably even you actually, how did you manage to build your business to that size? How did you do it? All, all right. Yeah? I'm going to ask you now. How did you do yeah. it? <laughs> it's about deployment of the cash that comes in your door. Right. right. This is what happens. And I'm sharing this because obviously I've consulted with many, many startups, medium, even large organizations, sat as non exec and the rest of it. Yeah, that's the ego bit then. Um, <laughs> this is what happens you start business with a passion. Got an idea, starting a business. Lind, any advice? Yeah, got some advice. Uh, off they go, do their business. Then they start getting some cash in and they're paying their mortgage and whatever. And the cash is usually a little bit more than what they were paid as a salary somewhere else. So they start saving some money. Then they start employing someone. Now the money's going out. That somebody is not bringing in the sales like they were because they think I'm earning a thousand pound a month. If I employ someone, I can earn two grand a month. That's not reality. Reality is the second person will bring in six or 700 a month. Yeah, so they won't double up on you because you have the motivation and everything else they don't, yeah? Right. Um, then they go, actually, I was making more money on my own. So they get rid of that one person and go back to their cells. Mm -hmm. And they stay there forever. And that is why we are a nation of one-man bands. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. um, and there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you want. Yeah? So it's about how you deploy the cash that comes in. Do you employ the person? Are you maximized with your own sales ability? In other words, are you dealing with all the sales that you can possibly deal with? If not, then don't employ the person. You put your money into marketing and getting more because you're, you are your best salesperson. Yeah. Right. And then when you're maxed out, the next bit of cash you come in, then you employ someone. You right. with me? So yeah. It's how you, so it's how you deploy your capital. Right. And so, so let's, let's have an example. Yeah. So, yeah. Say someone came to me and they said, they said, right, I've got um, some social media work that needs doing. Not that I yeah. enjoy it, but say they did. And they, uh, I don't mind it, to be fair. But yeah. they yeah. came to me and they said, right, I've got, you know, I'm going to give you a day and a half social media work. This is how much it pays, right? Yeah. And it's, say, it's, say it's 200 quid a day, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's 300 pound in a day and a half per week, right? Yeah. How do I say I go away and I find someone who is ten pound an hour? Yeah? yeah, I can turn I can turn that three hundred into I can just manage that person and I can use that individual straight away to to take that burden off me because delivering social media is a right headache. Yeah, yeah, and and then I can make say however much is left over. So one hundred twenty, so one hundred eighty, one hundred eighty. Yeah. yeah a week yeah. obviously i'm gonna to have to do some work and make sure that they're doing yeah. it right collect the billables pay the pay the pay the person make sure you know go and have a look at it every week so it isn't you know and then liaise with the client so how do i scale that then you don't use 180 quid for yourself you reinvest it right right yeah in, it's as simple as that in what well in whatever you're doing um, if social media is your thing, you reinvest into marketing and get more social media leads. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You don't use it. Now, everybody has to have a degree of income because, again, they have mortgages or rent and things like that. They have yeah. to do that. Uh, but when there's some spare capital over, you do that. I've had people come to me and go, Lynn, here's an investment plan. Um, I want to start a business. I want to do X, Y, Z. And you look at the numbers and you go, Okay, you've got yourself in at sixty thousand pounds salary, um, and you want one hundred and fifty thousand pounds to, to sort of start this thing. Yeah, great idea, but why are you taking sixty grand of my money? Yeah. Oh well, because that's what I'm used to. And honestly, I've had people say that that's what I'm used to in my job. It's ridiculous. Yeah, but that's ridiculous. not the point. What is the bare minimum yeah. you need to live off? Well, I got a mortgage. I got this right. So your bare minimum is actually. £25,000 a year. Tell yeah. you what, I'll invest, but you take £25,000 a year out of it, not sixty. Yeah. 
and they walk away, and they walk away and never start a business. What a shame! Because within two years they could be on that 60, 70, 100k a year. But this is what happens. People go with what they're used to rather than looking at the raw basics of it as to what I actually need. If you want to be in business, you've got to go on the raw basics. Yeah. Yeah, you've got, you've got to pay your mortgage, your electric bill. But you know what? This year, you're going to sacrifice your holidays. Yeah? You're yeah. not going to have spare cash to buy a new designer jacket or a new pair of jeans. Right? Because you're going to work your bloody business. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah? And, and yeah. that's it. And it's for the... Uh, the medium and longer term benefit of your entire family. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because, because you will own your own time. Yeah. 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 But Completely. people get greedy. Pe people get greedy and they want what they used to rather than actually what they need. Yeah. Because it's about creating that vehicle, isn't it? That business is a vehicle for your financial success for the future, isn't it? It's your unlimited earning potential. Right. Yeah, that's what your business is. It's your unlimited earning potential. Because you haven't got a cap. It can be as profitable or not profitable, as big or as small as you like. Because it's yours. Do you think a lot of it is to do with family members and friends telling you you can't do things in a lot of these cases? No, oh, you know what? I, I had this when I started because I'm probably rightly so to a degree. You know, I was 19, for God's sake. I was in and out of you know, the odd couple of jobs. I just Amazing. I just wouldn't turn up for work and, and so on. And, and then off I go at 19 and start this insurance brokerage, you know, and uh, uh, an old man industry um, still is. Uh, the average age is about 56 still. Um, oh. I don't get asked anymore, though, because I'm sort of <laughs> 48 now. Um, <laughs> uh, back then, it was like, my God, you're young to be in insurance. Uh, now I just don't get that. Um, yeah, so, you know, there were people that didn't want me to start up. And again, Maybe rightly so, because I was in and out of jobs. I could have really damaged myself financially had I started, got the debt, and sort of jacked it in. Um, you can't listen to people around you. You've got to have your own belief system. You know, if you believe in something, do it. Just don't ask opinions. I'd never ask opinions on my business. Right. And I don't mean that from an ego point of view, as in, do you think I'm doing the right thing? I, you'll never hear me ask it. You'll never hear me say the words. Because when I've got something in my head, I've already rationalized all of that. I've already gone through the, uh, the pros, the cons, the do I, do I not, the risks. Yeah? Yeah. And then, so once I've decided, I've gone through all of that rationale. I don't need then to go to someone and go, is it the right thing that I'm doing? Because you know what? The person I'm asking is probably less experienced than me, and they might give me the wrong answer and go, no, you shouldn't do it. You with me? Yeah. And then, and then your belief system takes a kick in. And then you stop making decisions. Yeah. And, that is, and that, is, that is fact. So when you believe in something, as long as you've rationalized it, you've done a little bit of research, you've understood it, then you go for it. And you know what I do? I actually don't ask people. I'll go around and say, hey, I'm doing this. Yeah? Mm -hmm. and, like I've been, and like I've been honest with you on a couple of things in the past, and it's just my opinion. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it can make you second think and re actually, you know, probably has a point. I'll, I'll re-engineer it in a different manner, but I'm still going to do it. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you yeah. what was, I'll tell you what though, Lyndon, which was really helpful yeah. when you, when you sort of said something to me and you, you really made me think and it, and it actually, what you said really focused my mind because I was yeah. all over the shop, you know, like a lot of people because I don't like the word entrepreneur either because actually it's no, full, of, no. full of BS, you know, there's a lot of BS around the entrepreneurial word, like you were saying earlier, but yeah. the problem with the serial entrepreneur is what, is what you would call people who have a certain personality. I would call it a disorder actually, potentially. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if you can't tame that personality disorder to, to a sensible you know, I'm doing this, 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 and this, like three things, maybe four, that's my gut feeling, maximum, then yeah. you're dissipating all your energy into things that are never going to work because you're never going to put enough effort in there to make them work. And what you said to me was really useful. I forget what it was. I, I could probably go through Twitter and have a look, but it really, yeah. it really made me just sit up and go, wow, this guy's right. I need to, I need to take this on board. And, 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 you know, you weren't the first person or probably the last who, who've said it to me. Yeah. So it was a combination of you and another one uh, of my mentors who, who said the same thing to me. You know, one of, them, one of them said I was like a squirrel on acid. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, 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 so the bit I, the bit I said was about focus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because, um, and the only reason I'm able to share that knowledge is because I, we, you know, a lot of people in business have been there and done it. Um, yeah. They they go off, they start a business, they build it to a certain point or not build it, and then they go off and do this, that, and the other. And oh, I've got five businesses and five different business cards, or or one business card with five logos on it. You know, it's all that sort of stuff. And uh, and then you look at it, and you go, which ones are actually making a million quid a year? Right. And none of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, none of these businesses you've got are making a million quid a year. None of them. Um, so it's about focus and. And my business probably could have been double or three times the size right now had I not gone off and done other things over the past 10 or 15 years. Yeah, oh, because it would have had my undivided attention. Yeah. But then, yeah. But then, but then you've, you've enjoyed yourself. No, I've enjoyed, of course I have. Yeah, I've enjoyed myself. And the business has still done, its, done what it's done, but it could have been two or three times bigger had it not been diverted. Yeah, and I've wasted a lot of money on investments. I've wasted uh, bad investments. I've done startups myself and realized I haven't got the time for it. Um, uh, and that's, again, about the focus, you know? So it's when you focus on one thing that you have a passion for and that there's a, a market opportunity, you just put your heart and soul into it. Don't get diverted off. And if you are the kind of person that does get diverted off with different business ideas and so on, you have to consciously control it and remind yourself what you're doing yeah and just yeah. make a note just make a note it's like it's like a marketing idea that comes along or a, or a toy that you want to buy you just put a you know put a list together i i might i like this idea and just make a note i mean yeah but, but you've got to value your time you know i have ideas on business constantly and i give yeah. them to other people you know um, yeah. but um constantly and it's because i remind myself stay focused on what really matters and what is really bringing in profit and what is really bringing in the income and just grow that. And that might sound a little mundane, but it's fact because you don't want to be there 30 years later going, I'm still a one man band. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, well, I've, gone off, cause yeah. I've gone off and tried lots and lots of different things. Yeah. Well, that's the challenge, isn't it? It's, it's, it's knowing when something is working and then firstly finding what your passion is i mean that's the that's the beginning of it isn't it at the end of the day yeah and passion passion is divided because passion is divided into this is a great business idea and you get all that excitement of the startup and maybe it's the office and uh, some marketing and your brochure and your business card and your website and you know and there's the passion for the business but not necessarily passion for the business idea it's the passion for starting a business yeah yeah and yeah. it might not be your passion. Your passion might be health and not insurance, for example. It might be that. Yes, you get a passion for the business, and then that, that quickly fades once it's set up and it's trying to do its thing. Or there's the passion that you have in your life generally. It might be food. It might be health. It might be golf. It might be podcasts. Yeah? yeah. It could be anything. So there's different kinds of passion. Would you say that the best thing is when you can combine the passion that you have in life with the with the passion for the business have i got a passion for insurance i'd be a real sad git if i did right? right i have a passion for business i have a passion for building a business yeah yeah, yeah. i have a passion for seeing people develop i yeah. have a passion for giving individuals opportunities inside my business right and, that's a, and that is a genuine real passion i love seeing come into the business at uh, 16, 17, 18, or with no experience or worked in a, in, a, in, a, in a shop or something prior and given them professional qualifications over one or two years and seen them develop through the company. And some even leave the business all on good terms and build their careers and are now on 60 or 70,000 pounds a year in a, uh, an area that they could never even dream of being in. You know, I, I still get people from years ago messaging me every so often thanking me for the opportunity because they wouldn't be where they are today. That's what I've got a passion for. It's it, that's that's really nice. It's, it's a feel good thing, isn't it? That the, the benefits of you being able to help people for them. Just well, yeah, I mean, yeah. Because I mean, I mean, they help the business, but you're helping. You're not just helping people. You're helping their entire lives. Yeah. You put you put them on the run of the ladder that'll last them the next forty years. Yeah. 
that'll enable their lifestyle, enable the holidays, the nice car, and the bigger house. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, I, I, for, uh, to be able to afford to bring your kids up or have kids even because people do think of kids and money are related, yeah? Um, which they are. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, so, you know, you, just doing that for people, that, that's the passion, you know? So what about critical thinking then? When do you think critical thinking really comes into business? It's a daily thing, isn't it? Yeah, good old Socrates, yeah. Um, uh, it's a daily thing. So look, my insurance business is in a, a, a factual-based industry. Yeah, we're regulated. Um, so if it's not documented, it didn't happen. Yeah. Um, and critical thinking, it's more than taking someone's opinion, because uh, there's lots of those. It's actually asking for the evidence behind the opinion. Right. So sometimes being in in my spot or my position, uh, some people that work for me or certainly senior figures, they might say, you don't like to be challenged. Yeah. Mm. I love being challenged. All I'm encouraging in, in all my senior team is to challenge the status quo, challenge what they're doing, challenge what I'm doing. I might not have the best idea. It might be an idea, but I'll back my idea up. So if you're going to challenge, back it up with facts. Yeah. I get that about yeah. you. I get that about you. I mean, I'm just having a quick look on Google here. And the top, it says here that the, the five critical thinking skills. Yeah. So for each of the critical thinking skills shown below, they give a number of activity statements, right? So we've yeah. got analyzing, separating or breaking a whole into parts to discover their nature, functional and relationships. I get that about you. You're very yeah. analytical in your, in your mindset yeah 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 and it says it says applying standards number two yeah so judging according to established personal professional or social rules or criteria yeah there are quite quite a few here but i think i think certainly you know discriminating as well is number three so recognizing yeah. differences and similarities among things or situations yeah so yeah it goes back to just your your analytical thinking doesn't it really sort of analytical mindset and uh, and that's nothing complicated it's it's i call it observations other people call it analytical um, right. so i like i like to simplify things because right. you know what life is full of people that want to complicate things yeah and when you dumb it down and simplify it you think why the hell did you even spend an hour explaining that to me because it's it only takes me a minute to do right. yeah? yeah um so simplification is is probably the best skill anyone can have because everyone will justify their existence by talking complexity right even the word complexity sounds bloody complex <laughs> um yeah um it spins me out when i say the word complexity <laughs> um and you see products you know especially in the insurance market complex insurance product and you think what the hell what's complex about insurance yeah right um so yeah, uh, simplification. So and observation. So I observe um, naturally behavior, words, yeah. phrases. Uh, you pick up on, you sense the feeling about uh, an individual, perhaps rather than what they're actually saying. And yeah, and it's 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 just absorbing that that sort of information energy and saying the word analytical. It's just just dumbfounded. Just make observations. I don't like the word analytical either, really. So when you're observing the facts of yeah. the argument, right, or discussion, let's call it a discussion because it shouldn't be an argument. Everything needs to be a discussion of, of like yeah, mind. discussion or debate, yes, help. Yeah, debate, yeah. So you will, first of all, you'll, you'll, have, a, you'll have an idea and then one of your team or clients or you know partners whatever will come and say well i don't agree with that so you'll look at them and say well okay well why don't you agree with it and then they will they will give you their their two pennies worth right yeah but then over and above all of that they're they're well sort of sitting behind it is your way of doing business your ethics your morals your principles that that sit behind all business and all critical thinking right yeah yeah um, no, absolutely. You've got to have your, your own ethics and morals in business. And there's so many, again, individuals that uh, scam the world out there. My own soul and heart just wouldn't let me sleep at night if I thought I'd ripped someone off or, or even done someone a disservice or dealt with somebody in a wrong manner. 
you know, sort of things I lose sleep over as, as, a, as an individual, as a person. So yeah, on top of decision making and, and the sort of critical thinking subject, as long as someone backs their, their debate up with facts, um, naturally, I have the, the broader vision, the broader, uh, I'm able to join the dots in, in the company and in the, the wider world outside the company. So I can add different elements into that debate that perhaps someone that works for you can't. Uh, however, when people come up with the, the debate and they back their, their words up with facts, it's great because it can open up other avenues, other doors, things that you didn't think of. You may still run with your decision or your idea or concept or whatever it is, but perhaps in a slightly different manner. And that's a good thing. So debate is really healthy as long as your team can back it up. Never, ever just take somebody's opinion because quite often opinions are flawed. Completely. They're, they're, they're driven a lot by emotion, aren't they? Oh, well, the classic, classic example would be, let me, let me consider this a minute, sort of lots of people are unhappy. Well, who are the lots of people? And then they go, Jim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you think, well, so the, so the first statement, opinion, lots of people can send you off on a path and go, my God, there's lots of people unhappy. And it can send you up this, this blind alley of thinking that, oh, lots of people are unhappy. The fact is, it's one person, and you Dude. make two, very, and, and you make two very different decisions based on the facts. Yeah, that's that's an interesting way of looking at it. But also, I mean, we're all we're all conditioned by a number of different factors. It, you know, from when we're born, we are conditioned throughout our lives to abs and absorb information and form opinions, which could be just emotional they're not they're not actually fact based in many cases so we could we could argue the point of something really believing in what we're saying based yeah. on just you know like our personality type for example it doesn't allow us to kick an idea around like i'm a bit different i i'm 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 sort of according to my friend my friend um who's a, who's like a studied behaviors for you know decades yeah. to think that I'm a, I'm a debater, right? Mm. Which makes sense. So, for example, if you say to me about, about something, we have a conversation, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about, I'll, I'll say, no, I don't agree with you on that. Uh, and, and, and I will argue the complete opposite, even though I don't even believe in it, just because I want to kick around the idea and get to the bottom of the facts, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I don't like to label people or to box people or, or anything for that matter. Um, okay. Because I think the second someone, and whether that is a, a psychologist, a behavior, whatever, it really doesn't make any difference. Um, because, you know, you might be classed as a debater today, but tomorrow you're something else. Um, in fact, in the next 10 minutes, you're something else. Uh, because your mind will change according to what I'm saying. Yeah, and mine will change according to what you're saying. That's very interesting. I I I, uh, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. So you you're gonna and and again depends who, you, who you're talking to. You know, would would you really debate with me? Would you really sit there and uh, a Richard Branson or an Alan Sugar say something? Would you really sit there and debate with them? Well, reality, it depends. Reality it is, depend. you, yeah, but reality is you probably wouldn't because you think they've got all these years of experience, built empires, and have all that intuition sat inside them. Yeah. Um, yeah, you probably wouldn't. So therefore, at that moment in time, you are not a debater. Very good point. Very good yeah. point. Yeah, I think it would certainly depend on the person that you were that you were talking with, wouldn't it? Or the team yeah. of, of people. No, it absolutely does. So, so I don't like I don't like if someone labels you as something, you know, and because it sets your mind in a in on a path of right. I'm a debater, and then it sort of almost becomes a conscious effort that. Every time somebody speaks to you, you're going to try and debate because I'm a debater. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think um, it's based upon, well, it's based upon the test that I probably did on the day. And yeah, now, no, exactly, exactly. You know, you change, don't you, over, over, over your career and over a week or even an hour, right? I mean, well, like I said, you change in 10 minutes. You know, you and I could be talking about business and then we're stern and we'll, we'll you know, we'll throw ideas and we'll debate and we'll discuss and we'll whatever. 
and then you start talking about kids and charities. Now you're very different. You're not going to debate when I when we say about I'm going to give a hundred thousand pounds to a charity. You're not going to go. Oh, I don't think you should. <laughs> yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so we you could change we, instantly. We yeah. we could talk about all sorts of things, you know, and and have a really yeah. good conversation like about martial arts training. We could talk about that for three hours probably. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, so so, but the point I'm making is you change according to what I or what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. business. You might debate some things. When I go and give a hundred grand to charity, you stop debating. So, are you a debater or are you not a debater? Yeah. So, in, in other words, in other words, don't label yourself. I like that a lot. So, with critical thinking, right? You know, you need to you need to be able to think critically very fast, don't you? I mean, if there's a situation that's happening within business that's like, um, you know, a crisis situation, you're going to need to analyse that that situation very quickly, aren't you? And then make a list of things that you need to sort of come up with a decision and a and a, and a plan, right? Like quite quickly. Yeah, yeah. Depends what it is, but yeah. I mean, in terms of and again, what is critical thinking? It's a label. Yeah, critical thinking is running your business. Yeah, yeah. Um, so people <laughs> seem to like labels for for some peculiar reasons. Um, but it's it, it's doing what needs to be done in order to run and grow your business. And part of running and growing your business is, and I will use the word, analyzing, making observations, having a vision, looking after your people properly because they are people. That's running a business. Now you could call that. That's human resources. That's critical thinking. This is the creative department. This is the actuarial department. It's just running a business. Yeah, or or, or managing managing your your team or department, or even just managing your job. You know, and your roles and responsibilities that you've got. Because we all have to have we all have to be able to think properly to make things work. You know, you have to consider a lot of things, and when you're selling one service or multiple services or one product or multiple products you have to see how they're performing in order to see how they're performing you have to analyze and observe and come out with a conclusion and some action at the end of it and that's it if that's what businesses did properly and in my book it's uh, i call it micro segmentation mm -hmm. if that's what they did properly then they would thrive but a lot of companies don't, a lot of businesses don't. And I'm talking small and medium businesses, even the larger ones to a, a, a good degree, they'll segment, but rarely micro segment. And it's the, the biggest barrier to businesses growing because they don't really understand or have the metrics in place of where the profit is really being made. So therefore, as a smaller business, they either keep going doing what they're doing or they start launching other businesses, as we've discussed, or they start launching other products or services, so the list becomes huge. Now they're an expert in nothing. Yeah, I agree completely. I think I think staying focused is certainly it's the way to go, isn't it? Because then people know you for what you do best, don't they? Be the authority. Simple as that. Just be the authority or something. Uh, yeah. Don't be a jack, you know the old you know, jack of all trades. And you must you must have come across businesses where they go, oh, I'm launching this service, or I'm launching these other products. And do you know why they're doing it? It's because they actually haven't understood what they're doing now today. It's happened to me and many, many people that I know. Yeah. And then, and then the problem is, is people just don't take you seriously. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and it becomes like a sort of, oh yeah, look what he's doing this month, you know, kind of, kind of thing. Yeah. For me, it's certainly about staying focused. And I think just, you know, if you've got 20 ideas, you've got to pick three. Or even just one. I mean, like, look at Krug Champagne, right? I mean, I was interviewing yeah. my friend uh, and, and mentor, Douglas, the other day. He used to, like, work on the Krug Champagne brand back in yeah. a few years ago. And he said yeah. the reason that they're successful is because you can't, you can't, first of all, the product is amazingly good. And, and they've just stuck with what they've done best. And just stuck at it and carried on doing it, and they haven't changed it. No, no, there are many brands like it. I mean, you look at Amazon, you know, yeah. uh, the world's sort of favorite brand right now. Yeah. You know, they start off with books and disrupted the book market. Not until they dominated that did they start launching other things. So you have to dominate your market first, dominate your audience, and then launch other things. Right. But people do it too early and they get carried away with their, I'll call it entrepreneurial ideas. 
and they don't understand their businesses and what they're doing today. Because if you fully understand what you're doing today, then it will put you in a positive position of being able to expand it vast and fast and widely, but they don't. They just launch other services and other products because they don't understand. Thanks so much for listening. Please subscribe and wherever you prefer, share with your friends. And if you enjoyed the show, drop us a review on iTunes or wherever you listen. Thank you.